welcome to Spear Medical Education. I'm Eric and this is another episode of our pharmacology uh, sort of screencasts. And today we're going to be looking at adrenaline. Now, if you're a little bit ropey with your pharmacology, check out our Pharmacology Foundations video that will explain some of the really basic sort of key concepts of uh, drugs and how they work and how your body sort of uses them. Uh, that will make this a little bit sort of easier to, to sort of get to grips with. But assuming that you've got a good understanding of uh, pharmacology already or you've watched that foundation video, what we're going to do now is look at adrenaline. So uh, I've put on there, you know, what what sort of um, adrenaline does and how it sort of works in the body. But actually, we've always got adrenaline in our body anyway. It's a naturally occurring hormone that's produced primarily by the adrenal glands on the kidneys. So we've already got adrenaline floating around the body uh, doing sort of things. It's uh, sort of ma managing our fight or flight response. But there's occasions where we just need to get more of it in the system to to mimic that fight or flight response to uh, to sort of uh, to, to to deal with some uh, certain medical presentations. So I've put on there, uh, as you can see here, under the pharmacology bit, uh, what it does. It stimulates alpha and beta receptors, and I've I've noted as well that um, at high doses of of adrenaline in the, in the body, you get stimulation of alpha uh, receptors, but actually you can isolate your beta receptors a little bit more by just administering moderate doses and that's within your sympathetic nervous system it also uh, so, so what, what what it does for us from a clinical point of view it relaxes smooth muscle in the bronchi uh, so the terminal ends of your airway and even uh, and, and it, that's even what causes that sort of dilation and re relaxation of your iris um, and it's also an antagonist of histamine so it's going to uh, reduce histamine release which when you think about anaphylaxis and things like that, you can see say, sort of how that can also be a benefit to us. It also increases cardiac contractility and causes vasoconstriction. Uh, it's eliminated, that is a really, really badly drawn uh, kidney, uh, but it's eliminated uh, primarily through the kidneys. So obviously if you've got good healthy kidneys, it's going to sort of be eliminated through those. Just be, you know, it's, it's not hard to imagine a sort of patient that has poor kidney function and uh, this this sort of drug being sort of taking longer to, to sort of work its way out of the system as, as it does with any other drug. Uh, and then presentation, the way we sort of see it in, in UK pre-hospital practice is one of two presentations really. You've got your one in 1000 concentration, which is usually here in this little glass ampule. And that's the uh, the sort of the more concentrated dose, if you like, where we're trying to uh, cause like a really sort of uh, profound effect with it. And then we've got the more diluted version here, the one in 10,000, which is primarily used in cardiac arrest, which is why you can see it here in a pre-filled syringe with the box that they normally come in. So just a quick sort of lock and key uh, type look at how this, an example of how, how you'd expect this to work. So if this is your, uh, the, the, your bronchial, so we'll say this is the lumen of your bronchial. So this is how wide it is at the moment. Um, it's, it's really, really narrow and uh, air is struggling to get through it effectively, uh, reducing sort of gaseous exchange and, and our sort of natural ventilation. Now, we need to, uh, that's constricted uh, in this case due to asthma, and we want to help that dilate. Now, obviously, there's other drugs that we use in asthma, but when it's life-threatening, um, when, when that patient's sort of going to potentially die from this, this asthma attack, we use adrenaline. So uh, we administer adrenaline. It sort of binds to its receptor site, so in this case, a beta-2 receptor, and uh, what we get then is, this is going to be a really poorly drawn circle, but all of a sudden this is going to dilate and become bigger, allowing more air to, to pass through and, and start reversing some of that constriction that we, uh, that we see with, with life-threatening asthma. So that's just an example of it in use. Like I said, it's just, if you've looked at our foundation video, we sort of hammer, it, hammer on about it a little bit, but it's getting into your, into your heads the idea that you've got these receptors in the body and they've got a, a lock that only only a certain key will fit, in this case, adrenaline. So the adrenaline binds to the beta-2 receptor and causes that bronchial dilation, um, allowing sort of, you know, obviously for better ventilation to occur. So let's have a little bit more of a look at the drug then. So again, in UK practice, our indications are here. So uh, we're only going to be, as paramedics in the UK, we're only going to be giving it for anaphylaxis. Oh, there we go. We're going to be giving it for anaphylaxis and uh, life-threatening asthma and if the patient's in cardiac arrest. So the reason I've separated these is because our concentrations are different for each one. So 
our one in one thousand presentation of uh, adrenaline where it's in that little glass ampule that we saw before uh, is what we're going to use for anaphylaxis and life-threatening asthma for cardiac arrest we're going to obviously be giving it intra arrest so whilst the cardiac arrest is in progress and we give it one in ten thousand which is that pre-filled syringe in the purple box and in terms of contraindications, again, for, for these indications here, these life-threatening indications, uh, there is no contraindications. We can just give it because yeah, it's a life-threatening emergency. And like I said, adrenaline is a hormone that's in your body anyway. So we're not introducing anything sort of that unusual that your body's not sort of dealt with already. So, so there's some of the indications, uh, indications and the contraindications. Some of the side effects, uh, I mean, it's stimulating your your fight or, fight or flight response. So a lot of these shouldn't be sort of too much, uh, too, too difficult to imagine why they're going to occur. But we can get palpitations, tachycardia, hypertension, sweating, nausea, vomiting, breathing difficulties, paleness, dizziness, weakness, tremors, headache, anxiety and restlessness. Now, I know um, certainly whenever I've given this drug, particularly you're one in one thousand, obviously you're one in one thousand to, to your otherwise conscious patients that are, that are suffering with anaphylaxis or, or severe asthma. Um, they do tend to feel really rubbish afterwards uh, after you've administered it. Uh, and it's not particularly pleasant for them. Personally, when I, whenever I'm administering uh, adrenaline, I'll, you know, it's always nice to try and get cardiac monitoring on the patient as quickly as possible, just so you can sort of keep an eye out for any arrhythmias, because eventually you might get to that point where you're, you're sort of looking at the risk-reward um, benefits of continuing to administer repeat doses of adrenaline uh, because you've still got lingering um, sort of anaphylaxis symptoms versus some cardiac instability that you might be causing uh, and obviously the anaphylaxis if it's still life-threatening is always going to win but it, you know it, we, we need to know what sort of what's going on with that patient's physiology as well um so if we so that's it really adrenaline in a nutshell uh the only other thing that i sort of you may or may not know about for, for sort of paramedics to work in urgent care or uh, sort of minor injury clinics and things like that um another use of adrenaline is uh, for heavily bleeding wounds. So if you've got a wound, uh, a, a sort of a clean, sort of heavily bleeding laceration that you're intending on suturing, uh, adrenaline's actually it's sort of just literally just squirted, if you like, topically into the wound to re cause that little bit of vasoconstriction at the exposed exposed blood vessels to allow um, blood to be sort of wiped away, less bleeding to occur, and more effective suturing to go on. Uh, it can also be given uh, diluted uh, post-cardiac arrest just to cause a little bit of a, a temporary shunt in people's blood pressure. And certainly in the UK, there's, there's more and more systems that are uh, allowing that to happen. There are more effective drugs that cause that tightening of the cardiovascular system and that temporary increase in blood pressure. Uh, but for, for paramedics, because adrenaline is a drug that's already available to us, it's another option. And like I said, you'll see certain systems out there that, that allow that to be given. So that's it. That's adrenaline in a nutshell. Um, thank you very much for listening. I'll just drop us back here onto to what they look like. Thank you very, very much for listening. Uh, if you um, like what you've heard, if you want to sort of get more of these kind of videos, please throw us a like and subscribe. And uh, we're aiming to sort of create one of these for, for most pre-hospital drugs eventually. Thank you very much.